Hi guys, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. I'm going to review the Inkbook Kindle app today, show you guys how to set it up and get it working well. So first thing you got to do, go to the Inkbook app store. You can install the Kindle app from here. Um, just got to sign in, uh, install it. It does take a little while, so it requires some patience. Then once you got that set up, you're good to go. We can launch the Kindle app. The first time you launch it, it does take a bit longer than usual to load. So it takes some patience here too, but... Once it gets uh, loaded, it actually works pretty well. But this home screen, it's kind of slow um, with this carousel view here with the animations don't work great with ink. So you're better off just switching over to like the library view over here, one of these library views. And then it just sort of works a little bit better with the ink screen viewing it this way. Uh, so to get the Kindle app to work with the page buttons takes a bit of setup because by default, it won't work with page buttons. You need to go down to settings uh, down here under the account. And then... Um, we have to enable page turns with volume buttons. The problem is, is you can't see it. It's all invisible here. Uh, one of the problems with ink. So you got to scroll down. Uh, it might not work the first time. This menu doesn't scroll great, but it's the first option under application settings. Uh, the one above newsstand right there. Uh, so uh, like I said, obviously you can't tell it says anything for volume, but um, once you get that set up, you're good to go. We just go down here to the change button functions on your ink book. Cause uh, by default, it's got the next page and previous page set up, but like here on the right side, you can go in and change it like I have to like volume up and down. So that way the buttons will work with the Kindle app and uh, other apps as well. So uh, volume down is page forward, volume up is page back. So you just have to uh, set those up and then hit save. Your ink book will restart and then it'll be ready to go with those new settings. Another thing you can do over here is you can hit the uh, uh, modify application shortcuts and then you can add the Kindle app to your home screen down here if you want uh, to have easy, uh, faster access to it. So now when we load up a book, we can use the page buttons to page forward and back. Uh, but one thing to note is when this like menu uh, part is open here, uh, the page buttons won't work. Once it disappears there, they'll, they'll work. But like anytime you have the menu active, uh, it'll just act as a volume button instead of page buttons. So you can turn those pages obviously by using the swiping method, but with the Kindle app, it's des designed for tablets. So it has that animation that doesn't work well with the ink. It's just a cleaner smoother transition when you're using the page buttons and a lot of times with android e-readers when you're using the kindle app the text starts to get washed out after a few pages but with the inkbook prime here the text it still stays looking nice and clear even after several page turns so um, it doesn't seem to suffer from that issue the app actually works surprisingly well the only downside is the text isn't as optimized for ink as it is like on a kindle e-reader uh, so this has the same bookerly font enabled as you can see you get it a bit more of a bolder, darker look with the ink optimized version than with the tablet version. Uh, but it still looks uh, quite good on the uh, ink book here and uh, quite usable. So it's not really that big of a deal like it is usually even after several pages the text still looks good so it's definitely an option. So you can use the highlighting features and all the regular features in the uh, Android app. Uh, highlighting actually works, wor works better than it does on the uh, stock ebook app so Obviously, the multicolored highlights aren't going to be very useful, but you can add highlights. You can um, hit the more option over here for searching, and you got the additional options from the uh, settings menu up here. Uh, we can increase and decrease the font size. You can change the font types. So you got all the usual features uh, with the Kindle app. So uh, we got the larger font size. It looks uh, quite good. So like usual, you hold down on Word, get the dictionary pop-up. You can also access the other cars, Wikipedia translations, uh, by swiping over here. If you have Wi-Fi turned on, these uh, obviously do require Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, so another thing is you can use uh, pinch zooming to increase and decrease the font size. That's a quick way to do it without having to go into the menu. So like I said, you got some other options up here on the settings menu. You can shop in the Kindle store if you want. Just takes a few seconds to load. Or maybe if more than a few seconds. All right, there we go. So uh, another thing with this app is you've got the uh, 
you know, table of contents and go to over here on the left. Uh, scrolling doesn't always work very well with this menu for some reason. It's like one time it'll work and the next time it just sort of doesn't really do much. But I don't know. It's just got to kind of go with it and sort of scroll down here. So, yeah, you, once you get the uh, once you get it going, it does work. It's kind of strange. But um, then we can just jump around the parts of the book using the table of contents. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video right here. Check out the ebook reader blog for the written version of the directions on how to set up the Kindle app if you need that. So thank you for watching. Bye.